Welcome back to Ghoster Coasters, everyone, and today we're going to do some way too early predictions for the 2025 season at Cedar Point. And the big questions are, what changes will we see with the merger finalized now? Season passes, skip the line stuff, all the fun merger things will get worked out in due time, but what changes do we predict that we'll see at Cedar Point come 2025? If you haven't already be sure to hit that subscribe button and join our spooky community today a huge shout out goes out to all of our channel members and coaster ghosts and producers without you we wouldn't be able to do all of this so thank you everyone now on to our predictions for 2025 and of course we'll discuss some things we'd want to see as well but probably won't happen so let's go ahead and get into it everyone the entrance sign outside the gates recently got a facelift and many guests wondered if that meant it might say cedar point a six flags park and while no, it doesn't, the question remains, will Cedar Point ever add the terms a Six Flags Park? We don't really know, but we do find it hilarious how serious people are about this. But really, who cares? It's roller coasters. Whee! One of the big changes we think we'll potentially see at Cedar Point in 2025 is the addition to the wonderful Peanuts characters we see running around. Could we see the Looney Tunes as well? We think so, Six Flags is a namesake that's recognized nationwide pretty easily by most and Looney Tunes characters are a big part of that. Being an adult, my first visit to Great America and seeing the Looney Tunes characters was pretty cool. We took pictures with them, it was just a really cool time and it was pretty different. Peanuts are nice but Bugs Bunny, Lola, Porky Pig is unique and different and we've seen a lot of people trashing the Looney Tunes characters so who hurts you guys? Seriously, these are fun, enjoyable characters, and Space Jam was a massive part of the 90s kids' childhoods. Looney Tunes resonates with a lot of them. Peanuts is a lot of specials, and it's not on every day. Looney Tunes are more day-to-day -day there, so we're kind of hoping for the Looney Tunes characters walking all over the peninsula come 2025. But what about ride closures at the park? Are there any we think may be seeing their final days? Well, Snake River Falls is old. But with the lack of water rides in the park, I'd find it hard to see it shutting down unless the full-scale Millennium Island project includes new stuff over there. In which case, we are all four here. As far as Corkscrew, Gemini, Cedar Creek Mine Ride, probably safe. Though, we'd kick Cedar Creek Mine Ride to the curb and build something new on that premium plot of land over there. But wishful and very, very unlikely for 2025 to see movement over there. But this brings us to three interesting things. Coaster Mania being at the head of some of them. The LSMs and Steel Vengeance is infield. The interview a week or so before Coaster Mania where Tony said the contract is signed. And of course, the Millennium Force lift hill and potential ride systems overhaul. Super exciting things for the park, so let's get into Millie first here. Celebrating 25 years at the park, this could be one of the best yet. Millennium Force has had its lift hill slowed for a few seasons now, and El Toro Ryan does a really great job explaining the difference in operating the ride and how that slight speed changes a lot of things. With the lift motor being replaced and brought back up to full speed finally, we can see really fast operations at Millennium Force again, as far as the ride intervals go. But what about the entire new ride system to go along with it? I'm not sure how implementing new ride systems would be, but it seems by now Millie might need one. And if we got intervals on dispatches down even faster, how great would that be? We can expect the lift hill speed to be back up to normal very soon, and that's exciting for all of us Millennium Force fans out there. But, do you remember that LSM box laying in the infield for Coaster Mania? We initially thought, hmm, top thrill too. And then our buddy pointed out that no, those were definitely the Intamin LSM staters. I believe in drive tech? Interesting, right? Because what are they doing just laying around by Steel Vengeance, a mere stone's throw away from Maverick? Cedar Point wouldn't leave it out unintentionally. So we think there has to be some sort of reason it was displayed in the wide open for all to see. Hints? Or mere messing with Thuzies. Could Maverick potentially be getting some new LSM work? And ultimately making Maverick a touch more reliable too? Seems a bit less likely, but what are those LSMs for then? If it's to be believed, those are in drive tech LSM staters. Time will tell for the wildest ride in the West, everyone. What about the Tony Clark interview where he said the next contract was already signed? Alright everyone, we'll concede here this could mean a number of things that have nothing to do with coasters or rides, period. Magnum Retract? We're kidding here. New restaurants, of course? But for real, this led us on a wild goose chase with friends conversing about what this could actually mean. Some think Millennium Ride Systems overhaul, some thought the contract might be for the Magnum Retract or even a Blue Streak GCI retracking as well, which both would be fabulous, we're just saying everyone. Not our ideas, just combos we had with others who also didn't know what the next contract might mean at this point. 
We're not sure, but we'd love to see the Magnum retract. But again, highly doubt this, especially with the 2025 season being so close now. As far as what we would love to see for the 2025 season, but can basically all but count out, let's get into that. Magnum retract, obviously. Blue Streak retract, both at the top of our list for the park. Retracking Blue Streak would give the nod to history while preserving classics and keeping the oldest operating coaster in the park going smooth into 2025. But again, that's down the line probably, if at all. One of the other things we'd love to see added to the park, which to be fair, they've been trying a bit more with new attractions, is shading. Spend the entire off season revamping shaded areas and adding ways to block the sun in the dead of summer. Maybe open some more water stations and keep guests cool at the peninsula. But the big one, a dark ride. Cedar Point needs a classic dark ride brought into the modern ages so badly. Yeah, definitely agree. They need a dark ride of some sort, a shooter, interactive ride, anything. That would be super cool. I know they used to have them, but they need one now. And the biggest what if of all, what if Top Thrill 2 closes all season for the 2024 year? 2025 would then be the big year everyone finally got to ride it then, but who knows and we hope it's open sooner rather than later at this point. And hey, if you guys haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well. Count down for the race for the sky and Top Thrill 2 again. Smash that like button, it greatly helps the channel. And a huge shout out goes out to all of our Coaster Ghosts and producers and members of the channel. We're so grateful for the best coaster community out there. And it's friends like all of you guys that make all of this possible. What do you guys think about all of these changes coming to the Cedar Point 2025 season potentially? And which ones do you guys think we'll see? As always, thank you for being a part of our spooky community and, and for, for Coaster Ghosting with Ghoster Coasters. Have a Coaster Ghosting day, everyone. And a Coaster Ghosting frightening night. <laughs>